So um, again, we are in RLRT, and um, let me remove this. I want to see your beautiful faces. All right. So, yep. So RLRT is a real life in real time. We use movies for, um, again, for um, to this to, as a platform to uh, discuss the Word of God. And today, all right. So um, we have our uh, last uh, movie for today, and it is uh, again uh, we are featuring. Um, Elvis, the movie, yeah, and um, and again we 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 are just a minute, right? I I'm so nervous, right, doing that intro <laughs> that I forgot to actually open my outline. <laughs> just bear with me. It's crazy, all right. Uh, Yes, I am get the new intro. Well, packing on, all right? So here, yep. Um, can you turn on the other air condition? Thank you. All right. So again, we, uh, um, our passage for today, our passage for today is that um, uh, we, we are there. All right. Man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. And again, Elvis Presley is very iconic. And uh, if you're going like to look there, there are, again, um, so he, when we, there are like some people that we actually associate with, with some things. And I'm going to mention some of these names. And I want you to tell me uh, what are they known for, right? Or are they are associate, associated with, right? So... Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. Elon Musk, uh -huh. Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. right? Um, Tiger Woods, Manny Pacquiao, future president of the Philippines. There you go. All right. And uh, if he becomes the president of the Philippines, I'm gonna run to become a senator. Uh, no, I'm kidding. All right. Um, and of course, there are people who. Are Famous for being uh, infamous, right? Adolf Hitler, right? What is he known for? The Holocaust, right? Pablo Escobar, narcotics. There you go. All right. And so let's have some more. Uh, Wright brothers. There you go. Flight. Pierre and Marie Curie. Yep. Chemistry. What particular chemistry? No? No? Konti na lang. Right? Radiation. Diba? Alright? And uh, that's why um, um, one element was named after them, curium. And um, Thomas Alva Edison. Okay. Yeah. Alexander Graham Bell. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. T telephone. Um, Michael Jackson. Yeah, he's known as the king of pop, right? And of course, Elvis Presley, right? Elvis Presley is the king of rock and roll. And our message for today is titled, The King, the Rock, and the Roll. All right, yep. Yep, and, um, and there's another one that I want to like to think what is associated with this name, right? Your name. Uh, can, you say, can you say your name? Can I say our name? All right. One, two, three, go. Ronald Ramirez. Uh, wake up, people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know I messed up the intro. But uh, so one, two, three, go. Ronald Ramirez. No, no, not Ronald Ramirez. You say your name. Your name, not my name. All right. Ready? One, two, three, go. Ronald Ramirez. What are you known for? What is associated when people mention your name? Right? Are you getting this? Because here's, here is a fact, right? That you and I, we have our name. And eventually, when people talk about you, when they hear your name, there are things that come to mind. Am I right? 
The same way, but, but here's the thing. We know Mark Zuckerberg for Facebook and all the other icons there or people that I've mentioned. But actually the ones who know them, the ones who know them are the ones who are closely living by them. Are you getting this? You know me as Pastor Ronald Ramirez, right? And I have, of course, I have like my different titles, you know, the, the Elvis of Lightcast. <laughs> Cursey, change that script, <laughs> right? And uh, I, I'm known for, for, for the things that I do, but really the ones that really matter, really matter are the people who are close to me, right? My family, the leaders of our church, Right? Because they see me in, a, in my everyday context. Now, the question is, what is your life known for? And so our first clip for today, again, this is taken from um, um, Elvis, uh, Buzz Lorman's um, Elvis. Let's look here. The first point for today is we build our lives on and for something. Let me say that again. We build our lives on and for something. And today, you know, with being a social media age, we actually have see this um, one time or another. It's the hashtag, and uh, we put, you know, fill in the blanks here. Hashtag blank is life. You know, some people actually like, uh, uh, they put, uh, uh, for example, travel is life. What else do we put there? Uh, family is life. Uh, yeah, Filipinos, yeah. rice is life. It's there. Uh, and, and um, what else? Even like the menial things, chocolate is life, you know, and uh, uh, music is life and all that. And uh, you might, it might be facetious, but here's the reality. We actually have our hashtags in our hearts. What do I mean? We don't have to put it on social media, but we actually have hashtags within our hearts and we are saying blank is life, right? We live by that and we build our lives on it and for it, right? Now, our lives today, they are products of our everyday choices. You didn't arrive where you are at right now in a vacuum or overnight. These are, you know, progression of everyday choices. Um, it can be small, it can be big, right? It can be simple, it can be complex. But they, you are in your situation right now because it is, again, you might, not show, you might not have chosen it, but they are products of your everyday choices. Now, and uh, it never came from a vacuum. You are influenced by your parents, by your peers, and by places where you were, you've been, and even the period of time. Right? And not only that, you are also influenced by what, we, what you read, what you listen to, and what you watch. And have you noticed when those who are, uh, those who are, uh, um, those who are uh, lonely or sad, and the tendency is for you to play sad songs? How many of you will admit to that? Right? You just came from a uh, you know, broken relationship. And then so you play your theme song. Yeah? Mbakit <laughs> pa. And then you play that song over and over again until it becomes a broken record. And then you cry. We, we do that to ourselves. And, uh, and just imagine today, the, the most popular, most popular um, social media app that actually influences, and it, we even in, invented that term, social influencer, TikTok. Hmm. And what you don't know is that TikTok is actually spying on you. Yep. And uh, it is true, we build on something, and we build for something. And here are like the things, I list down some of the things that common to all of us. Number one, career, business, right? Um, marriage, relationships. Family. Um, another one is uh, hobbies, even our talents. There's nothing wrong with that. But later, I'm going to see, I'm going to show you that if we build our lives on it and just for it, we are going to actually shortchange ourselves. 
And one of those, actually, that is a product of your choice, your spouse. Mm. I look at your spouse and tell them, yeah, I chose you. Ay, ay, ay. All right, come on, come on. Rika, you can look at Zan. Okay. All right. And here's another thing. Here's another thing. Somebody actually said this. Never insult your wife's choices. And we, men and women, we see differently. But that's one thing that you don't insult. Never insult your wife's choices. Why? Remember, you are one of them. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so I always, tell, I always tell people that my wife is the most intelligent woman in the world. She married me. <laughs> All right? And uh, going back to Elvis, my, my nana is a very big Elvis fan. And as a matter of fact, you know, so I, you know, I was influenced by that. I grew up idolizing Elvis Presley, but praise the Lord God, I became a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are two icons I actually greatly admire um, all throughout childhood. And uh, all throughout, no, from childhood, and Elvis Presley and Bruce Lee. Hmm. How I wish that my, my family name is, uh, uh, is also Lee, all right? Um, Ronald Ramirez Lee. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, of course, you know that, you know, music and martial arts. And as a matter of fact, Elvis was also into karate. He studied camp karate. He's a black belt. And actually, his later signatures were karate moves. Right? He's, uh, he's like this. That's a karate move. Right? And when you finish his song, like, yeah, that's a karate move, right? That you got that. And even like he's, uh, that's from a karate move, right? He, he had done that. He, and it became, you know, a signature moves. You know, and here's, the, here's a factor for those who know me, right? They know that I don't dance. Yeah, I don't dance. You know why? I suck at it. And as a matter of fact, we made a mini movie. Uh, Jake and uh, um, Jonathan, Pastor Ruel, Rika, and uh, Pastor Noli was were in that movie. The reason is because we made we made that up, we made that so that we can replace the dance during our wedding. True, true story. Because I don't because if we open the dance floor, I'll be forced to dance. So we thought, what can we do? So we made a mini movie. But the title of the movie is Filipino Connection. Okay. And, uh, and uh, you know, so I don't really dance because I suck at it, right? But when I do, they're Elvis grooves. Mm. All right? You want a sample? Yes. Uh, you want a sample? <laughs> All right? Actually, actually, you know, I'm not going to do it live. But um, when I proposed to Michelle, this is what happened. The real reason is... Because you're God given. <laughs> you're God given.
rest of my life with you. I know, yep. And this, that was not my idea. The pastors actually like, forced me to do it. But, you know, I didn't want to propose to her in front of 200 kids. But then, you know, it, uh, it so happened that um, that night uh, we were talking about relationship. And the speaker actually told me uh, during the time he was, the, he was our director for uh, the, during the time, the GBA now. But during the time he's a Metro Southern Baptist Filipino Fellowship. And men, I never felt so nervous my entire life. You know, that's the first time, all right? And uh, the second one was when I asked Michelle's hands from her Lola. <laughs> that's the second time. And here it is. In our, in our verse for today, the Bible says in Matthew 7, 24, and look here, and can you read this with me? Look at what it says. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. There were two people who were actually described here. And then in verse 26, let's jump there. And it says, But everyone who hears the saints of mine and does not do them, what happens? Will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Did you hear that? They both built their house. So what's the symbolism of this house? This is our lives. You build your life on something. Right? And I don't know about you what you had built it on. Right? And as, as a matter of fact, uh, I also have that. Because ministry is, uh, you know, can be, because this is also my career and my vocation, ministry can be my house. And there are times that it is actually been, it, what is the most important in my life is my family. does the same thing. And uh, there's really nothing wrong with that because we were created for that, you know, for relationships. But what happens is that, what happens is that, look at what the Lord God says here. He says, everyone who hears the sayings of mine, this becomes a qualifier. What do I mean by that? This is not talking about atheists. We are thinking when we hear that, these are the people who do not believe in God. They're foolish. No. Look at what it says. Those who heard me say these things. Are you getting this? So this is not talking about Atheists or agnostics or people who do not have anything to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. This is talking about religious people. And one of the most dangerous spirit today is the spirit of religion. Right? What do I mean? That you are into the act but not in your heart. Right? And, and look here. This might be even people who had crowded the Lord Jesus Christ during the time. Who were following him and listening to him. And there was this one time that they left the Lord Jesus Christ. That is in John chapter 6. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ told them, You are coming not because of the words that I say. You are coming because you want to eat. Well, I'm guilty of that too. Right? I go to fellowships not to really listen. You know, when I was younger, I go to youth fellowship. Number one, to eat. You know, um, during the time, I still remember the, the bread you know how Baptist churches in the Philippines will always that uh, mamon? You know, that sweet bread and orange juice. Right? From Sunday school until youth fellowship, we have that. And of course, to see my crush. Mm. Right? By the way, in the video, Michelle was not 16 there. Huh? She was already 22? She was already 22 during the time. <laughs> she looks so young. And here... And this is talking about church people, if you're going to think about it. This is talking about us. 
right? And remember what he said, the Lord Jesus Christ said, those, everyone who hears these sayings of mine, right? So let's stop for a while and not think of those people who are outside our church. Let's talk just about Lightcast. And you are here. For our guests, you're a little bit exempted. But for us who have been coming to church for quite a while, that we are actually like express that we are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in the Bible. We read them. We hear them. And as a matter of fact, do you know that Elvis, you, we have seen that in the movie, in the trailer. Elvis' musical influence, his early influence actually were black charismatic churches. So his movement, yeah, that's from the Holy Spirit slaying him, you know. <laughs> and... I actually, do you know that I actually learned my hymns, not from church, right? But I was listening to Elvis' gospel songs. His, he has a gospel album, right? Since maybe four years old, five years old, it's piping in, you know, we hear that. You know, and even like, uh, you know, the, one of his iconic uh, gospel songs is How Great Thou Art. Yeah. And then he also... Uh, um, some of those, uh, you, do, some of you, do you know the mansion over the hilltop? I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. You know that song? Right? Some of you don't, but Elvis actually sang that, right? I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. Yeah, this is a song. And another one, an evening prayer, right? Some of you might not be familiar, but I grew up with this song, with this hymn. If I have wounded any soul today, this is like his song. And, you know, and when I became a pastor, this, this uh, hymn actually became, you know, one of my prayers, right? Because, you know, um, it is talking about that we need to be clear before God, before we minister. And the question is, and, uh, and another song that, uh, do you know that it, it's now or never? It's now or never, right? Do you know that that was actually, the, the tune to that was taken from a hymn. The hymn is, uh, Oh, How I Love Him. Oh, how I love him, how I adore him. I forgot the next one, but it says, mm -mm, My sunshine, my all in all, the creator became my savior. Yeah? If this were taken, he is so familiar to all of this. And remember in one of his... Uh, uh, in, in the trailer also he said that a preacher once said to me when things become dangerous to say sing sing our lives we have hashtags but church I'm talking to you because you heard the word of God but the Lord God is telling us not to be doers only not mean not as hearers only, but be doers of the word. Right? So you can never say that I built my life if you are just listening, attending church, and doing things, but not following the Lord Jesus Christ entirely. And uh, the song that I sang to Michelle is entitled Fools Rush In. Fools Rush In. And actually, it's a, an iconic song of Elvis Presley. And so um, uh, there's a, uh, it was, uh, it was a, uh, what you call that, covered or revived by, uh, um, what's her name, Casey Musgraves. And it was used in the movie. And that's, uh, and this is actually the story of Elvis Presley and his family. Let's look, let's look. We all know what happened to his marriage with Priscilla Presley, right? And actually Priscilla testified that they never split because they don't love each other anymore. Even when Elvis was in different, a different relationship already, they still say, I love you to each other. And what's the reason for that? It is because Elvis cannot be a normal, regular person because of the empire that he had built. And actually, the movie was taken from the perspective of his manager, Colonel Tom Parker. And a lot of people are actually blaming Colonel Tom Parker for Elvis' death. Elvis, I hate to actually admit that for a long, long time. I tried to cover that, you know, trying to believe because, you know, as I said, you know, growing up, I, I idolized him. 
Elvis was into drugs. He need sleeping pills to be able like, to sleep. But he was sleep still like, you know, um, he had a hard time waking up, so he need uppers. So this is his life. And to the point that even Priscilla took the pills still. Right? And, but they are prescribed. They were prescribed by his doctor. He actually died of, um, you know, heart failure, and they were influenced by drugs. So what's the point? Remember, he really loved his mom. You know, the first song that he recorded is, you know, that's all right, my mama. You know, that's all right, my mama. Yeah, so that's the song. He loved his mom, and actually, his only dream is to buy his mom a pink Cadillac. Because his mom was like talking about it. I'm going to buy that for her. But of course, before he became really successful, his mom died. Right? It was actually during the time he was in the army, in the military. Right? So watch the movie in order for you to act, understand the, the background to all this. He never really had, and after that, of course, his relationship with his dad, but particularly the greatest influence in his life is Colonel Tom Parker. But it's really great because, you know, if, uh, uh, he's a hairdresser actually said that, um, you know, that Elvis had been seeking all along. And as a matter of fact, Elvis, when he died, you know, um, he died in his bathroom. You know what he was reading? It was a book about the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. He... I don't know, maybe, I don't know really where he is right now. I'm wishing in my heart because he heard the gospel that before he died, he had repented and had come to the Lord Jesus Christ and they had taken him as his Lord and his Savior. But here's the fact. He built, I know that when he built all these things, he was not expecting the craziness of being popular. When he was asked one time, what is your regret in life? He said, how oh, I wish that I did not, became, became, I did not become famous. Because he cannot get out. And Priscilla said, she repeat practically. That's what it happened. Because I believe that Elvis built his house on the wrong foundation. How about you? How are you building your house? And look at verse 25 of our verse. Right? So the next point is beware of coming storms. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. The same in verse 27. So the one that was built on the rock and the one that was built on the sand by the wise men and the foolish men, what happens? Right? Storms came. Right? And now here, listen. Storms will come. The integrity of your house, the integrity of my house will be tested. Is your faith authentic? Or are you just claiming this faith in this God because all things are going well? Right? Let me tell you, even if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not immune. You're not excused to the problems of this world. And it's actually uh, crazy because I've seen this sign, authentic fakes. Right? Um, shout out to NYC Lux. Right? And, and we were in the Philippines. Yves was with me. And uh, we went to Green Hills. And I couldn't believe that there are actually classes for fakes. Class C, Class B, Class A, Master Copy. Oh, and I was about to, I was thinking of buying during the time because my kids were into basketball. I was thinking of buying them um, curries. And when I computed, the Master Copies are much more expensive than the originals here in the States. Can you imagine? And how, how about our faith? Are they really authentic? And we were in uh, Pampanga, you know, in the uh, north of Manila, and there was this big sign, New Antique Furniture. <laughs> what? Right, so, you know, and uh, whether you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ or not, you will face storms. Tap the person beside you. Tell them you will face storm. Mm. Yep. Right? If you are beside your spouse, tell them you are my storm. <laughs> you and I listen to this you and I will take a hit one way or another one day and several times the question is will what you build your life on be able to hold up not hold up but hold up 
Will it keep standing? Will you keep on standing? And listen to this. If you found yourself, if you built yourself on the wrong foundation, it's not only you who is going to be affected by that. The reason for you building your life and trying to be like make it in life, you know, your family, your children, your spouse, your loved ones, your friends, they are going to get hit too because of the way you are actually building your life. No man is an island. They are going to be affected. Your choices today will affect your family in the future. So build well, I'm telling you. And here, in one of the, one of the things, Elvis presses a lot of songs. Love Me Tender. You know, and of course, we also know that he popularized uh, Please Release Me. You know, uh, we know JLL's Rock and all that. But one of those that I, I liked, but never really wished to sing, right? I mean, to apply in my life, is that song always on my mind? Because that is actually a song of regret. And um, I'm not sure, I know that Falls Rush In is really the story of Priscilla and Elvis. I don't know about always on my mind if he wrote this or if somebody wrote this because of his failed relationship with Priscilla. So um, here's another music video um, relating again to what had happened to them. Career, family, kids. I know that Elvis Presley had wished the same thing to really work in his life. He actually has only, he only had one daughter, Lisa Marie, who actually became at one time the wife of Michael Jackson, right? And do you know that um, he, Elvis, through Lisa Marie, had a grandson that looked like him. At 27 years old, he killed himself. Tragic. You know, and again, hashtag blank is life. That's where you build your life on. It will collapse if that hashtag is not Jesus Christ. Leading us to the last point for today, be on the rock or be on the rocks. Jesus Christ is the rock. Jesus Christ is the rock. And he wants us to actually find or found ourselves in him. That he, is, he becomes our foundation. And look at verse 25 again. And let me complete that. And it says, and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. Listen, and it did not fall. Why? This is actually the most important phrase in this passage. Why? For it was founded on the rock. What is your hashtag? Right? In verse 27, the same person, he heard the Lord Jesus Christ, the same words, but look at what it says. And the rain descended, and, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. How many times that we have seen believers, their lives had collapsed. How many times that we had seen people who were claiming to be you know, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, and all of a sudden turn their backs on the faith, and not that doesn't exclude pastors. And one of those, I actually liked him because he was an author of a book that I actually gave to young people. The title of the book is "I Will." Um, was that uh, "I Kiss Dating Goodbye"? Right, I gave that to Jake, and that's why Jake's first kiss is during his wedding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? I gave that to those that I'm counseling when they enter into relationships. You know, Joshua Harris, the pastor who's authored that, turned his back on the faith and said that he doesn't believe in God anymore, in the Lord Jesus Christ anymore. Can you imagine? Popular Christians who were saying, you know, people who actually like singing the praises of the Lord God, and now they are claiming that they don't believe. What happened? Because again, it's not founded on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It was founded on a lot of things. And today we have ministry training this afternoon. Everybody's welcome. We have lunch. If you're not attending uh, the if you're not attending the ministry training, you will only have water. Okay. <laughs> right. So, but here's here's the thing. There, I could be active in the Lord's work, but my heart can be far from the Lord of the work. I can be a good preacher of the Word of God, but I can be dying inside because I am far from the Lord. Search how about you? How do you treat the Word of God? Do you just listen? Do you get entertained? And do you agree with it? But the question is, do you apply it? I was talking about forgiveness last week, remember? And somebody actually came to me after the service and then told me, Pastor, what you told in the message, that is hard to apply. And I said, it's true. That's why forgiveness for someone who had hurt you and the, and, the, and the damage is still ongoing today, it is not just difficult, it is impossible until the Holy Spirit works in you. Mm. Christian life is not hard. Right? Christian life is impossible. Right? It's easy to love you. You are nice people here. Except for Jomar. <laughs> right? And, you know, it's easy to love people who are nice. Am I right? Am I right? But there are people here that does not match your, your personality. You don't like loud people. Michelle doesn't like loud people and she married me. I still remember that uh, I attended the Bible study when we were still in a boyfriend and girlfriend in there, and we went to California. And during the time, the Bible study leader, I didn't like what he said. I didn't like what he said. And Michelle, you know, was so sweet. She actually, like, you know, um, um, hooked my arm, right? And I said, oh, so she's so sweet. She's supporting me debating, right? But after a while, her fingers started crawling up. She covered my mouth. <laughs> True story, right? And, and there are times that there are people you know, in, that you meet in your church, in your cell group, that doesn't match. But that's where love is tested. It's easy to love the lovable. It's hard to love the unlovable. And listen, if you're thinking, oh, in our cell group, there's no one who is unlovable. Uh, oh, in life, because there's no one who is unlovable here. Uh, it, it is because you are that one. <laughs> Right? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But that's the test. That's the test. And did his or did your house stand? If it's not on the rock on the Lord Jesus Christ, it will forever be on the rocks and eventually it will fall. It will collapse. Now you are saying, Pastor, I made a lot of wrong decisions in my life. Is it too late? And here's the good news. No. No. God just wants you, the Lord Jesus Christ just wants you to follow him closely. Does that mean that the hurts in your life will be gone? Not necessarily. The consequences of the things that you have done, will they be gone? No, not necessarily. Right? But here's the thing. You cannot let your past hostage your future. God has a wonderful plan for you. And if you follow him, he said that he has a purpose for you. And he said that he can work all things together for good to those who love God. The qualifier there, to those who love God. Say that with me. To those who love God. So stop your sinning. You, you know what you're doing wrong. Right? Stop your excuses. Stop your excuses. God wants to use you. Stop being lazy. And some of you know Pastor Elmer Rosa. He's the digital coordinator here in, uh, in New York. He's, I also consider him my pastor. And actually, he spoke in one church. And uh, for those who are not Filipinos, uh, I'll, I'll translate this in a little while. So what he preached, and he actually is suffering from uh, Parkinson's. And uh, every time that I see him, he really struggles. He actually takes medicine. And the effect of the medicine is only two hours. And after that, he has to take it again. But he cannot take it if it's winding out. He needs to be, really be out of it. Right? So he was, a, and right now, it's really like a, when you see him, it's really like worsening and worsening. And then he went to the Philippines and spoke in church. He was so busy in the Philippines. In one of the churches, he spoke. 
And then the pastor actually stood up and then said this. The pastor said, Pastor Rudy Fernandez said this to his, to his, uh, to his congregation. Right? He said, Alam nyo, yung taong to, hindi ako naahawa sa kanya. Right? Hinahangaan ko siya. So let me translate that. I don't pity Pastor Elmer. I actually admire him. You know, because he is already in this situation, but he serves the Lord with all his God. And then Pastor Rudy, knowing him, if you know him, right? Then he pointed to the congregation. Yeah? Sa inyo ako naaawa! Bakit ang lakas-lakas nyo? Ayaw nyo maglingkod? Ang tatamad nyo? Right? And, oh. right? and he said, you are lazy bums. You know? I'm, you're the one that I pity. And true enough, if you are not serving the Lord God right, tell you, you are the one who's missing it. Stop your excuses. Right? Oh, kasi, uh, you know, Pastor, I can't do it kasi because I have a job, I have my family. Who does not have that? Right? Who does not have that? Oh, Pastor, kasi I'm sick. There are a lot of people who are sicker than you, but they are serving the Lord. Stop your excuses because one day, tell you, if you hear my words, the Lord Jesus Christ said, and you don't listen, you don't do it, listen now, it will collapse. And it's not only you who's going to take the brunt of it. What I'm scared is because it will affect your kids and your kids' kids and your future generation. Tell you. And that's why our next curriculum, the title is I Love My Family. We're starting that next week. Right? And um, so it's I Love My Family. And then we are positioning ourselves to a five-week campaign that is called uh, Every Family for the Lord Jesus Christ. Every family for JC, because we want to see what the Bible is talking about when it comes to leading our family biblically. Because the Lord God wants us to enjoy, you know, our marriages and our families, our relationships. Do you believe that? But the thing is, why do Christian families, do I do that? Why is there breakdown? Why aren't we happy? It is because we don't follow what the Lord God had said, or we don't know what the Lord God had said about our families. So do you want that? Right? So pray for that because that's what we want. We want strong families in like us. Amen? Strong marriages. Yeah, that's what we want. So every family for Jesus, and that's going to be our next curriculum, I Love My Family. Now, is life hashtag, if life hashtag doesn't work, right? Is, if your life's hashtag right now doesn't work, go to the rock. Go to the rock. And the very thought, the very thing that you thought will bring you happiness in everlasting bliss in exchange for you following the Lord Jesus Christ closely, beware. Tomorrow, it will bring you sorrow. Headaches, heartbreaks. And now after a while, you'll, you'll be singing. No. I feel so lonely, baby. I could die. And there are times that the reason is because you never made the choice of following the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your might. And tell you, if you are in that situation, I was there. And I was a pastor. But praise the Lord God, tell you, I had conflicts with my wife. Right? We were violent at times. You know, I destroyed a lot of stuff in our home. My kids still find it legendary that I punch our computer. I have a 27-inch screen, right, iMac. I punch it and made a hole through it, right? And my kids, when they're talking that story, they were like, oh, you remember that I punched the computer? They were even glad. Those were sad times for us. But praise the Lord God, because we pursued Christ, we pursued discipleship, taking care of you, becoming shepherds in order to train other shepherds too. You know, when we did that, tell you, right? We never had a major fight ever since. Oh, man. Praise the Lord. The last fight that we had was last night. <laughs> 
kidding. Right? 2017 was our last fight. Kasi nagalit siya sa akin, hindi ko hiniwalay yung dekolor sa may kulay. You know, and silly things, and it just escalates because there's no purpose, there's no pursuit. Pursue Christ. Right? And you will be founded on the rock. And the last clip for, the, for today, um, do you know that actually Elvis Presley, uh, he has an iconic song. So there's a lot of songs that he had sang. One of those is uh, the popular, um, the most uh, murderous video song in the Philippines. I did it my way. <laughs> right? right? And the, the song is like, you know, you know, we know, this is like iconic songs. I did it my way. Right? And we just say, uh, 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 dead again because of my way. And we know that, uh, you know, that's like, uh, you know, headlines. And another song that uh, became popular is that, you know, uh, um, what's that? Uh, the Unchained Melody, of course, he sang that. That's one of the last songs that he sang. Um, there's another one. Um, the unreachable, the unreachable is star, you know, <laughs> right? Dream, the impossible, my dream pagali, you know. <laughs> yeah, we have, a, we have a classmate in Bible school who was singing it that way. You know all this. And he even like sang in one of the songs, uh, the American Trilogy, the supply title of that song. He sang this, and you hear this from time to time. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Yeah, he sang that. Because he's familiar with this. But one thing that was actually iconic too, and during his comeback, he sang this song, If I Can Dream. If I Can Dream. Let's play this, and I'm going to answer his dream. Right? Let's, uh, let's look here. There is a trembling question. Why can't my dream come true? Mr. Elvis, even though I idolized you growing up, let me tell you the answer. Christ is the answer. Do you have questions in your heart today? How will you live your life from now on? You might be in trouble. You might have caused them. Some of the troubles that you were in might not have been caused by somebody else. But the thing is, the Lord God is telling you He has a purpose for your life. Pursue Him. In our last verse, last two verses for today, in verse 28, and so it was, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished in His teaching. Okay. People were astonished at Jesus. Do you still have that wonder on who? this Jesus is. I pray that you are going to be astonished by Him. Right? That your worship is not forced, but really coming from the bottom of your heart. Right? But here's a warning. Verse 21. I didn't put it on the board, but I want you to open your Bibles there and mark them. This is the scariest verse in the Bible. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. It says, right, if you are there, mark it. This is for you and for me. Right? And listen. Again, those who listened and did what the Lord God, the Lord Jesus Christ had done, had said, I mean, you know what it says? You are, you are founded yourself on the rock. Agree? That's what the Bible says. I didn't say that. Right? And it says, storms will come. But you will be able to withstand anything. And here's in Matthew 7, 21. And here's actually my, one of the scariest things that I am really scared. That some kids like me who grew up in church don't really know the Lord Jesus Christ. They know about Him, but they don't know Him. They grew up in church, but they don't have Christ. So today, I'm speaking to each and every one of you. And I pray that you are not going to hear these words. And look at what the Lord Jesus Christ says. Not everyone who says to me on that day. On the judgment day, Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones who does the will of my Father in heaven. And on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? This guy is a preacher, right? 
He's a coach in the cast. Didn't we drive out demons in your name? That's why the Lord Jesus Christ said, Do not rejoice because demons are scared of you, he told the apostles. But he said this, But be rejoicing because your name is written in the book of life. And then these people say, And, and we did many wonderful things in your name. Remember, Lord, I am part of the worship band in Lightcast. I'm the drummer. I'm even a pastor's kid. And then look at what the Lord God says. This is the scariest statement in all eternity. Then I will answer them. I don't know you. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. What's the meaning of that? It's because you had relied on your good works that you missed Christ himself. Christianity is not about religion, religious stuff, religious organization. Christ came down to die for you so that you can have a relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So if you want to have that relationship right now, maybe the Lord God is tugging you, or maybe you're saying, Pastor, I knew Christ, but I went away. Do I have a chance? Of course. But today, I want you to really go to the Lord We'll pause for a while. Right? If you haven't received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you need to do is tell Him. But most of all, because I'm talking to you, church, where is your heart right now? What is your hashtag? Can I challenge you that today? Tell the Lord God, Lord, I want my hashtag to be this. Jesus Christ is my life. Right? So let's go bow down before the Lord God, I'll give you a minute or two to pray. Lord, I pray that all our other hashtags, Lord God, will really, Lord, become dim by the hashtag that Jesus Christ is my life. Lord, we will face storms. But Lord, being founded on you, we will be able, Lord God, to withstand and stand. Thank you, Lord God, for your promise. And today, I pray that we are going, Lord, to become, Lord, wise listening to you and doing what you told us today church i praise the lord god for all of you and i pray that we are going to be together to win the world for the lord jesus christ for he has given us the ministry of reconciliation and for for those who until now you are not sure that you have a relationship with the lord jesus christ all you need to do is to repent recognize that you would sin before him and take him as your Lord and Savior. If that's the desire of your heart, right, I'm going to pray. And if you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, follow me in prayer. It's not the prayer that is going to save you. It is the grace of God that you are now accepting in faith. So if that's the desire of your heart, follow me loudly. Don't be ashamed. Never mind the people around you. This is between you and God. And the Bible says... With the heart, you know, with the heart we believe and with the mouth confession is turned unto salvation. So if you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ today, follow me in prayer loudly. And His promise that your sins are going to be forgiven. You are going to have a personal relationship with Him. You will have eternal life. You are going to become a new creature. All things are gone. And He says that He will dwell inside you, will never leave you 
nor forsake you. That's the desire of your heart. Pray with me. Lord God, come on, pray with me. Lord God, thank you for loving me. Lord, please forgive me for all the sins that I had done against you. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for me, for shedding your blood. Thank you, Lord, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords who became mindful of me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, I now open my heart and I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. May it be true. Hashtag Jesus Christ is my life. Thank you, Lord, for your promise of eternal life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. And I want to close by singing. Um, the eldest president of the Philippines, his name is Eddie Mesa. Some of you know him. And we're trying to get him to for the GBA um, to, uh, to be our guest in the GBA annual this coming November. Uh, October, I mean. And um, I watched him and he became an evangelist. I actually sat beside him when I was 13 years old. And then he sang this song, right? And uh, he testified about, you know, how he pursued the life of Elvis. And unlike Elvis Presley, his relationship with Priscilla was totally gone. Eddie Mesa and his wife, also a, a, uh, a movie star, right? They are family of uh, movie stars. You know, um, Rosemary Hill, they went back together. And today, um, his uh, daughter last month died, Cherry Hill, right? But um, it's so re just reassuring that Cherry Hill is now with the Lord. Eddie Mesa is now a pastor. Yeah. And this song, the title is My Tribute. I first heard this from him. And I want to sing it and dedicate it to the Lord. Right. And if you know the song, right, just sing with me.
everything be for your glory for you are the king you are our rock and our name is on the eternal role in Jesus name we pray amen God bless you